around. We've seen that right in the first period with Quebec taking a two nothing lead and then back to back penalties have cost the Nordiques a tie and the, the momentum changed. But here's Joe Sackett getting in the slot, just drifting there, wrist shot, getting it through and getting it on the net. A good play by the young guy. You know, he's moving out. He's kind of like the point man and he's got to get that shot and get it on the net. It's more important sometimes than trying to pick corners when you're shooting from the point. On the face off now Sackett couldn't hold it in at the blue line so they have to reorganize as Jeff Brown gets it far side Goulet moves in it's a bit of a pass and then to Peter Stasny in me into the corner but there so is Goulet well this Nordic team can put some scoring power on the ice here's Peter Stasny now back out hits the linesman and the whistle goes and the first period is over and in the period the Soviets outshot the Nordics eight to five but in the period also the Soviets outscored the Nordics three to two so it's Soviets three Nordics two this is CTV's NHL Soviet Super Series the time is right for winter fun there's no Ravioli, beefaroni, spaghetti and meatballs. When children find food this much fun to eat, why tell them it's good for them? Chef Boyardee! Good morning, Canada! Coast to coast, it's wake up time! Sleepy head in the morning, head for the coast. Dive into oceans of life. You up like ocean spray. Head for the coast. We wish you sunshine every day. We hope the best things come your way. And with your box of Kellogg's corn, we give the best to you each morning. This is the day. After 20 minutes of play at Le Colisee, Central Army has a 3-2 lead on the Quebec Nordiques. Certainly it's been a time of turmoil for the Nordiques over the past few months. We had an ownership change and a coaching change, and this club also has a new sniper, Walt Dubny, although he's not all that new. He's been around the league a little bit. He joins us now in the first intermission. Walt, you have played around the league a bit. You've scored a lot of goals in a lot of different cities, but this is the first time you've ever played a Soviet hockey team. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is, uh, you're right, Dan. This is, uh, you know, a new experience for me. I, uh, you know, you have to be, it's kind of exciting to play them. You know, everybody, you, we, while you watch Team Canada, play them and things like that. And, and uh, you just hope you get the chance one day. And uh, here's my chance. And I'm enjoying it. The first period was, I think we were just kind of watching them. You know, we, we, uh, they came right back on us. There were three quick ones. But <laughs> we found ourselves watching them more than playing them. And uh, we'll uh, try to turn that around now. What were your expectations, and are they what you had expected? Of the Russians? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you, you, your expectations are the obvious, the fact that they can skate really well and that they uh, move the puck very well. And the, uh, they're what we expected. We, you know, our game plan was to watch the guys without the puck because they seem to be the most dangerous with, uh, with the European teams. And uh, that, that was the case tonight. You know, they scored a couple goals. We got a couple uh, bad penalties, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, Players Just like, like that. NHL game, isn't it? <laughs> players like that, though, you know, you don't want to give them too many, uh, too many power plays because they're going to hurt you. Let me ask you. We just have a few moments left about the hockey team. It has been a time of turmoil. Uh, has the club settled down? Are the players back on an even keel and thinking about playing hockey again? 
Yes, I think with, uh, you know, with, with John Perron, uh, I, I like Ron the point, I have nothing against him. But what happens when you start to lose, you know, I went through it in Toronto, when you start to lose, uh, what happens is players start to lose confidence in one another as well as themselves and everybody starts pointing fingers and you get a snowball effect and mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, you know, it got to that point and it was not Ron's fault or anybody's fault. I mean, we have the same players here now, but maybe the, the new face, John Perron, has, has been a breath of fresh air for us. You've fallen behind this hockey game. Uh, you, you haven't lost hope yet, have you? Oh, no. I mean, I just, <laughs> we, we just try to figure out how to play them first, and then we're going to go from here. Well, best of luck. Thanks very much. Okay, for thanks. Here. Let me say uh, just Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody back in Thunder Bay. Thanks, Dan. Well, Thunder Bay and all those small towns all across hey, the country. The big ones, too. Watching. Thanks very much, Wally. Go back and play some hockey. <laughs> Scores 3-2 after the first period of play. We're going to reminisce about 1972 when we come back at Brad Park. I'd love a new car, but I've got to pay for Christmas first. Your Toronto Ford dealers hear you. So for the last 15 days of the year, pick out any new car or truck and your down payment is zero. Your monthly payment is zero. Your total interest is zero till May 1989. Over 3,500 Escorts, Tempos, Taurus, Trucks and Probes. Start the new year with a new car or truck and don't pay till May. It all ends December 31st at your Toronto Ford dealers who want to wish everyone happy holidays. Even the GM dealers. Okay, the import dealers too. When you have headache pain, there's one thing you want most, effective relief, and you want relief fast. The kind you get with aspirin. Medical evidence proves it. Aspirin gives you effective relief. And for many people, aspirin brings relief in minutes. I feel great now, and aspirin did it. When you have headache pain, today's aspirin gives you what you want most, effective relief, and you get relief fast. Come and try Super Seafood Samplers at Red Lobster. Four great seafood tastes heaped on one plate. Eight combinations from just $7.95. It's for seafood lovers who want it all. Red Lobster, for the seafood lover in you. Red Lobster presents party platters to go. This holiday season, pick up platters of shrimp and crab claws ready to go in one hour. Great for any party, anytime. Red Lobster, for the seafood lover in you. CTV's Night Heat has once again been voted TV Guide's most popular program. Be here weekly for award-winning action and drama on CTV's Night Heat. We've played 20 minutes in Quebec City, Central Army of the Soviet Union against the NHL's Quebec Nordiques. Someone who knows more than a little bit about Soviet hockey, Brad Park. Brad played in that Super Series way back in 1972. And this time of year, Brad, we look at the Soviets, we look back over that period of time. Maybe some of your memories about that series. You do have a lot of memories. And anytime you go back to the first series between two teams, it really heightens. 1972, I remember it like yesterday. It was September 2nd in the Montreal Forum. We had all the big people there. This was the clash of the two titans of hockey. It was only 30 seconds into the first period when Phil Esposito put us on the board to be up 1-0. It was a great goal. Espo was a dominant player in the series. But by the end of the first period, we knew, and I knew for sure, that they were coming at us in waves. And it was in the second period that two great goals by Valery Karmaloff had put them ahead 4-2. From then, they cakewalked, and by the end of the game, our heads were down, and we lost 7-3, our armor had been pierced. Toronto was a different game. We had to bounce back, and we knew that. Yvonne Cornway breaking down the right wing, scores the eventual game winner. We had changed our defense. We had changed some of our forwards. We had gone out with a new concept, and we had to go out and attack. We had to regain our stature in game two, and as hard as we played, it was inspirational plays by certain players at certain times. For example, Peter Mahovlich on this one-on-one -on -one against the Soviets was the clincher in this game. Game three in Winnipeg ended up in a 4-4 tie. We were not dominating like we thought we would, but we had to go back to Vancouver for game number four. This was where we were supposed to take control, but two quick goals in the first period by the Soviets and by number 13, Boris Mikhailov, led them to an early lead and they went from there. By the time that the game was over in Vancouver, we were a very frustrated hockey game. They had dominated, they had taken the game from us in our country. 
and we fell like this. I'm really disappointed. I am completely disappointed. I cannot believe it. Some of our guys are really, really down in the dumps. We know we're trying, but what the hell? I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can, and uh, they got a good team, and let's face facts. But uh, it doesn't mean that we're not giving it our 150% because we certainly are. We had been beaten at our own game in our own country, and we left for Moscow. Club Z, only at Zellers. Every time you buy something, you get a reward. Valuable Club Z points. Are you ready to order now? Or would you like some more low prices first? These T60 VHS videotapes are just $2.47. Save 50% on these Rubbermaid Servant Savers, and Regency bath towels are just $5.97. At Zellers, where the lowest price is the law. Everything points to free. To get the 47 standard features we include in the Dodge Shadow and Plymouth Sundance, our competition would ask you to do a lot of extra shopping. With the Dodge Shadow and Plymouth Sundance, you get it all under one roof. Chrysler, changing the landscape. Game five, Moscow. Team Canada invades the rink there with its 1,500 fans. Paul Henderson makes it 4-1 in the midway through the second period. We know that we've got to produce, but the Soviets bounce back. Here's a goal by Anderson, makes it, and another goal by Gusarov, and we, all of a sudden, we are in trouble. It's 4-3, another goal by Shadron, and finally, the Soviets are all over us until late in the game when a goal by Vilkalov makes it a five to four game. We have now won one game, lost three, and tied one. We cannot afford to lose another game. But the magic of Paul Henderson just begins. This is game number six. Henderson with a long shot beats Tretiak, and now that is the game winner. We have now won our second game, and we know that we have to play it period by period. Game seven, Henderson does his magic again and leaves us with an all or nothing game in game eight. In the second period, John Rattel puts me in, ties the game at two to two. Part of my memory that I'll never forget was this game. At the end of the second period, the Soviets have gotten two goals and they had made it a 5-3 game. This goal here by Vasiliev makes it 5-3 and we know that we're going into the last period down two goals. In the dressing room between the periods, we're told that if we do tie the game, it's not enough because the Soviets are going to realize that they have more goals in the series. But we fight back. This goal by Cornwye late in the third period makes the game tied at 5-5. Five to five. How do you explain it? Coming from three games back, but late in the game, Paul Henderson gets on the ice. He puts himself on the ice. Esposito to Henderson, 34 seconds to go. Team Canada has won the series of the Titans. An exciting time, and me, just a 24-year-old kid, could earn some memories. But when I look back now, I think of what we went through, what it meant to Canada as a nation, I won't forget. Sixteen years ago, Brad, you played against them. How have they changed over the years? Oh, they're still darn good hockey players. <laughs> they can, the, the finesse, the skill that these guys have, and they really work on it. So they, you, you've got an all-star team. Every one of them can play. And the way they handle the puck, and, and they take such advantage of the power play. The power play killed us in 72, and it's doing it tonight. Mm -hmm. They've not been North Americanized yet. Well, they have. They have. They're a lot more physical now than they ever were. We have a couple periods yet to play. 3-2, the Army leads. And we'll be set for the second period in just a moment. When the stars come out to 
play, baby. A twinkling show, ooh, dinner out of sight. Yeah, the night time is golden light time. Big Dipper at McDonald's. Showtime is night tonight. The Remington Microscreen Ultimate with the exclusive beard lifter stretches the skin and lifts whiskers other shavers leave behind. The Remington Ultimate. If it doesn't shave you as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver, I'll give you your money back. The Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. The first screen shaves incredibly close, the second even closer. The Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. And the Lady Remington Rechargeable, the perfect gift. you just can't improve on. And this is one of them, Beeman's Chewing Gum. Molson presents NHL Super Series. The Soviet Union in exhibition with teams of the NHL. Brought to you in part by Kentucky Fried Chicken, the real taste of living. By 7-Up. Are you up for it, 7-Up? By Beeman's Chewing Gum. And by Molson Canadian, what beer's all about. After one period of play, the Central Army of Moscow leads the Quebec Nordics 3-2. There you see your goal scorers. Mario Marwa scoring from Anton Stasny and Jeff Jackson at 3-14. And then it's Andrew Shane from Peter Stasny and Curtis Lecician at 7-53. Then a couple of power play goals brought the Central Army back into the game. Karutov from Patisov and Larionov. That was while Marwa was off the ice. And then when Stephen Finn picked up a high-sticking penalty, Patisov scored unassisted at 14.49. Kamienski, then from Kazatonov, the go-ahead goal. Central Army three, Quebec two. Shots on goal. The Army outshot the Nordics eight to five. So we're about set to go here in the second period at the Colise de Quebec. As you look at the starting goaltender for the Soviets, Milnikov. And Bob Mason in goal for the Nordics. Peter Stasny will face off against Igor Larionov, who wins the face off cleanly. Gets it back to Fatisov for checking his Goulet. Really cost them there as Podubny tried to relay it back to Goulet. Puck is cleared over the glass and into the crowd. And we'll get a face off near the Nordic's blue line. Victor Tikhonov, 11 seasons as coach of the Soviet national team, the various select teams, and of course he is also the coach of the Central Army. And the second fellow standing back there is Boris Mihailov. You remember him. Mihailov, Petrov, and Harlamov, one of the great Soviet lines back in that Soviet series that Brad Park so graphically described for us. Here's Brown shooting it in. Out at center ice, Brown's got it once again. Third rink wide. And Brown picking it up. Now he's going to bring it through center ice. Brown mishandled it as he hit the line. Makarov gets it back out to the line. And the whistle goes. I believe on an offside that I didn't see. Patisov. Now they're calling an offside. There you see uh, Patisov. Here's Patisov's goal. As we mentioned in the play-by-play, -play, this is deflected by a Nordics defenseman, Jeff Brown, out in front. That's an unassisted goal. 
There's really not much a goaltender can do on a goal like that. He's already thrown, Bob Mason already thrown his left pad out to handle the shot, and the puck just got redirected. That's the go-ahead goal in this game as Jeff Brown circles at center ice. Brown backing up, tried to feed it off as it was deflected off a stick. Larionov inside the zone now. Puck is deflected in front of the net and steered away by Milnikov along the boards to the far side. Still uh, kept in. Penalty is now over. Shot right in front of the net. Up near the blue line. 26 is Peter Stasny along beside the net as the Nordics continue the pressure. Stasny getting it out in front. Brown shoots wide on that. Just hooked it wide. Now Fatisov up against the boards. Goulet is in there as well. Out in front. Quick shot. Rebound. They shoot again. Wide of the net. Peter Stasny with a couple of good opportunities. Then Goulet got it out in front. And Kaminsky brings it away. Rink wide, Makarov over the line. Now Makarov looking for Kaminsky, but he gets a rink wide. There's a shot from a bad angle. That one taken by Larionov. Behind the net, Kaminsky battling back there with Marwa. Kaminsky still battling. Buck is poked free, and Podubny has it and clears it to center ice. Racing after it for the Nordics is Huff. He gets in over the line. Malahoff out now. Here's Yarby taking a shot. Bad angle on a backhand. In there checking now is Nemchinov. Here's a quick backhand shot. That one taken by Sakic. Up along the boards. Huff, he takes a good solid hit by Malahoff. Out at center ice once again. Biakin. Biakin just beating it off to Stelnov. Stelnov over the line. Ducks away from a check. Now it's back to Biakin behind the net. Biakin clearing it into the slot. And it's deflected away by the Nordics defense. Still inside the zone. Biakin. Behind his net, Moeller into the corner. And the Nordics pick it up with Finn, clearing it down the ice. And going back deep for it is Kusara, picks it up, and it's called on the icing. This is the NHL Super Series on CTV. Get a university degree paid for. Study history. Physics. Medicine, engineering, name it. Join students like these who are getting a university degree, a salary, and that important first job, all paid for by the Canadian Armed Forces. Want a degree and a future? We're under recruiting in the yellow pages. Choose a career. Live the adventure. Peter Stastny has had seven 100-point seasons in the NHL. Here's a good example of why. As he goes to the net. Peter Stasty is such a strong guy, he got taken down very, very quickly there. But one of the things that he does so well is move the puck in around the net, over sticks, under sticks, between feet, that he's got a real knack like that. And a lot of times he'll force that play, but uh, in that situation, he was in the right place at the right time, it was good scoring. There's a quick shot in front of the Nordics net. And the Nordics come away with it now. Out at center ice is Trevor Steinberg. To the line now, Cody got the jump at the line, but got away with it. Buck is wide of the net now. Dulles keeping it in. Steinberg moves in. Cote's got it. Cote out in front. There's a quick shot by Gillis. Now behind the net. Has the tone off. Just dumping it off. In the corner, Gustaroff. Ahead at center ice. Trying to knock it down as Beckoff. And he's got it over the line now with a little room. Tried to feed it through the slot area for Homotop, who was breaking up the middle. Buck wound up coming back to Bob Mason, who covered it up, then let it go and gives it to Cote. He clears it out to center ice. It'll go all the way down the ice. Gusarov going back for it. No icing on the play. Milnikov leaves it for Gusarov. It clears it up. Ice. Bekov couldn't contain it. Now he's got it. Bekov dropping it off. Here's Patisov. Took a shot. It's deflected away by the defense. It's center ice once again for the Nordics. It's cleared down into the Soviet zone. Back there, Podubny fighting off Patisov. Podubny gets it into the slot. Antosh Dostey shoots. Hit the post. Hit the post. Moeller at the blue line. Gets it in now. But up knee. Up against the boards. Brown can't hold it. Now Beckoff. Beckoff behind the net for Tisov. Tisov just standing there. Tremendous tempo to this game, Brad. They are. They're moving up and down. I think the uh, Soviets took about the first five minutes to get their legs, but they've been flying. Quebec is playing a little more cautious. They're not trying not to turn it over in center ice. So you'll see them dumping into the Soviet end a lot. Just as a precautionary measure, try not to force some plays. Fatisov just inside his line. Podubny moves up on the puck, but it's deflected out to center ice by Larionov. Larionov 
Then forced back. Patisov near his line. Backhands it. Up through center again for Kamienski. Kamienski dropping it for Larionov. Larionov unable to control it against the checking of Anton Stasny. Stasny gets it again for Patisov. Drops it up. But up. Neat play. Shot. It seemed to hit the shoulder of Milnikov. Now behind the net. The Nordics playing well. There's a shot by Anton Stasny. Shoots it again. It's in the slot. And in the goal crease. And Milnikov covers up. Anton Stasny had the tying goal on his stick and couldn't get it in. 3-2. Soviets lead. This is the NHL Soviet Super Series on CTV. In Canada, a wedding is cause for mild anxiety and intense emotion. When my hands are shaky and my knees are weak, I can't seem to stand on my own two feet. Who, who do you think when you have such luck? I'm in love. I'm all shook up. As well as one heck of a celebration and the clean, cool yeah, taste yeah. of a genuine Canadian beer. Molson Canadian. What beer's all about. Well, the Stasny brothers were very much involved. First of all, Stasny the elder, Peter, with a great chance in front of the net, and that one rang off the goalpost. A great and shot. Then Stasny the younger, Anton Stasny, number 20. Well, why keep your eye in front of the net? Here's the one chance. Now watch it come back out. I think I think he just lost it. I wasn't sure if he was trying to just slide it through some feet or bury it, but I think he just he wanted to pull it and it just went off the end of his stick and said maybe he didn't know how much time he had. And it's just one of those plays that was so close yet so far. Peter Stassen behind the net, but he's chased off the puck behind. Now the Soviets will start out as Makarov brings it to center ice. Leads it over the line, but it's whacked right off the boards and back out past Kamienski. The Soviets have it inside the zone as Kamienski comes back. Kamienski, have we seen Kurutov in this period, Brad? I don't think we have. I think we've seen a, a lineup change here as Kamienski's on that line now. No, Kurutov hasn't been here. I think he may uh, have got some uh, stitches between the periods, but we haven't seen him out yet. Maybe we'll look for him on the bench as Larionov is out there now with Makarov and Kamienski. That's the line. Puck is clear to center ice. Stephen Finn's got it there. Finn back near his own line. Drops it off for Marwa. Marwa clearing it off the boards. Taking the good safe pass to get rid of the four checking Soviets. Now Marwa. Finn. Finn. Off the board. Back deep in his own zone. Now Gusarov. Gusarov for the Soviets. Now four checking his Goulet. He gets the pass away. Work it up to the line, but they don't get very far with it. It's stopped back inside the line. The Nordics just get it back out again. That was Dulles who got it out this time. Dulles has got it again inside his own blue line. And again, he shoots it out to center ice. Hupp has got it. Hupp over the line. Sackick trying to find some room. Now to Hupp. Hupp rolling it past for Yarby. Yarby was tied up as he went for the net. Now Dulles is at center ice waiting for Mates to get on side. Rattles it off the glass and inside the Soviet end. Gusarov's back there being forechecked. Puck is cleared out to center ice, and Dulles will go back into his own zone for it as the Soviets make a change. Dulles from behind his net. Just waiting there as the Soviets move to four check. Biakin's number 25. He heads for the benches. The Nordics come to center ice. Knocked down near the line by Kazatonov. And the Soviets back in over the line with Pekov trying to beat it through now. That's Kamienski. Kamienski behind the net, but he's tied up on the play. Stopping at the side is Homotov. Homotov trying to get it in front. Rolls in front. Turning his back to the play and unable to see that pass was Pekov. And is back near the line. Kazatona off the boards for Homotov. Homotov being checked by Lucician. Behind the net. Kamienski out in front. Quick shot. What a save there made on a shot by Pekov. Out to center ice it goes and it clears the glass. And we'll have a face off. 3 2, Soviets lead. This is the NHL Soviet Super Series on CTV. We'll never use their grapple grommets again. Cheesley? Cheesley? Chief? Carruthers? Did you call our customer to follow up that grommet shipment? Uncanny, Chief. I called a half hour ago. Had a small problem with the fit. Straightened it out. That's the way to use long distance. Solve... Solve the small problem before it becomes a nightmare. Glad to see you weren't caught napping. <laughs> follow up sales with business long distance. 
Well, that's not our CTV makeup person who did that job on Krutov. It was somebody's stick, I think, Brad. Doesn't look too pretty, does it? Well, that's, uh, that's a little bit more than a mouse. <laughs> Let's see. I'll see this one tomorrow. He has not played in this period. Back inside the line, Konstantinov. Checked by Anton Stasny. I right, start to see some bodies fly here now. There's three body checks all in a row as Moeller stepped into somebody as well at center ice. Davidoff trying to get loose. Good stick handling as he gets in over the line. Now Davidoff still has that puck under pressure from Moeller. Still with the puck. Davidoff. Davidoff is finally knocked off the puck by Jackson and out come the Nordic. Here's Moeller. Moeller dropping it off. Brown getting set. Throws it into the slot and it's deflected over top of the net on a shot by Podupny. Now up against the boards. Konstantinov out in front. Here's Jackson. Loose in front. The quick shot taken by Podupny. He's pulled to the ice. As Melnikov covers up. Good action in front of the net. Some pretty good hockey going on here, Brad. Oh, lots of excitement at both ends of the ice. A great display of some stick handling. But look at this chance in front. Watch Podupny stay with his puck. The one thing he did was keep his stick available. He tried to make sure they protected his stick so that he couldn't get a hold of it. Here's another look by the side of the net. Here's Fatisov going after it. It kicks out in front. Now watch this good checking by the Nordiques as Podubny is mucking for the puck behind the net. Stasny picks it up, goes out to the point. Podubny goes to the front, and he gets a good scoring opportunity. Good action around the net. There's Milnikov. Split the time at the Canada Cup, the last Canada Cup, with Yellow Shaken, who is not here. As a matter of fact, there's not a Central Army goaltender here at all. Yellow Shaken has run into that bugbear that Yellow Shaken has been battling for a couple of years. There's a one that rang off the post and then hit the post, I believe, on the other side. And we're going to get a penalty for interference called. One post and then the other. Larry Onoff will be going. This is the NHL Soviet Super Series on CTV. When the stars come out to play, baby, a twinkling show, ooh, dinner out of sight. Yeah, the night time is golden light time. Big Dipper at McDonald's. Showtime is night tonight. Igor Larionov for interference at 8-19. Here's Let's the face-off. Watch Steinberg shoot the puck to the net. Now watch Cote go to the, to the net as it comes off the post. Watch the right pad. Hit the, well, the arm. Hit the other post. Back-to-back -back post. Milnikov is hearing bells right now. Yeah, I was going to say the bells are ringing. Chance again to take it. Here's the interference. That's a pretty good job. Well, that's the way of tying your man up. <laughs> that's what they say. Those centermen are responsible for each other in here. <laughs> if you're the centerman and you're in, you got to be responsible for your other centerman. Well, uh, I think they might learn that trick in Calgary last year. Nordics are controlling this period. They have outshot the Soviets so far by 7-6 by one shot margin. They seem to have a territorial edge, at least so through the last five minutes of play. We've got almost nine minutes gone in the period now. Here's a quick shot by Sackick, but he fanned on it. Puck is cleared out over the line and then poked away. Nordic's coming right back again. That was Jeff Brown who was trying to get loose. Sackick will come back and pick it up from Mason. Sackick starting out. Hit for Goulet. Goulet checked on the play by Kazatonov. Kazatonov loses it, however, to Sackick. Podubny. Podubny fighting off the check. Peter Stasny moves in to help out now. Stasny, as they set up, gets it to Sackick. Sackick to Brown. Brown one times it. Good save by Muldikov. Now it is Gusarov out to the blue line to center ice. Soviets trying to get loose now. Here's Humalap going in alone. Score! Short handed goal. One of the problems, Ron, when you end up putting a forward on defense, Joe Sackett gets beat at center ice, and here's Chernick going in. Look at his head up, and he just threads it through the legs of goaltender Bob Mason. Watch him, look at his head. He's not even looking at that puck. You gotta love somebody who's got that much control that that's the one thing the Soviets do so well. They never look at the puck. You can't see anybody else if you're looking at the puck. Uh, young Humalev, unassisted goal. 
I'm reminded when you see a play like that with the Soviets playing a Canadian team, 9.24 the time of the goal, 4-2 to two now. I'm reminded of Karutov eating up Guy Lafleur on a power play in the Canada Cup second edition. A very tough spot to put young Joe Shazak. You know, he's not a defenseman. I don't know if he played that position in junior, but he made a decision. The puck was in the air, and he took one step forward, and the Soviet got to it first. And then by that time, that forward motion, there was no way he was going to be able to recover. Well, the biggest problem as we watch Fatisov killing off the penalty, the biggest problem, Brad, I think, is that forwards are not used to having players come at them. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it becomes a difficult problem. You spent your whole life having people come at you, and you, you're not faked out too much. Well, it, it takes time. You're, there's very few forwards that can go back and, and really take that defensive position. It's something, if you're going to put a, a forward on the point, you're going to spend a lot of time in practice making them take those one-on-ones, making them take two-on-ones. You've got to give them that extra dimension. You've got to give them a look at it. Well, the Soviets, you make a mistake, and you pay. Four to two right now. The penalty has expired, and back to get it deep in his own zone is Malahov, number seven. Trying to get it ahead. It's... He laid off the board and out to center ice. Lassishan has it now. One of the fine young players on this Nordic team to Stelnov. And he clears it back in again. Malahov. Ahead at center ice for Homotov. He clears it in. Moeller. Moeller leaving it off. Lassishan. Out to center ice for Paul Gillis to Cote now with a little skating room. And it rolled off the end of his stick and back to cover up with Stelnov. Back out near the line for the Soviets, Ohomotov. Homotov clearing it back into his own zone, and Moeller will go back for it. In for checking number 19 there is Bekoff. They clear it off the boards. And it's tapped out to center ice by Gillis. Relayed down into the Soviet zone by Kote. Steinberg's in there. Good check up against the boards on Gusarov. Kote in to help out, but also in there is Kazatonov. They jam up against the boards. And it's hoisted up along the boards and the Soviets will start out once again. Zelopukin. After it, Davidov. This is the fourth line for the Soviets. Now Gillis. Unloading it. That's center ice for Steinberg. Drips a shot wide of the net. Kept in at the blue line by Jeff Brown. Zelopukin is number 10 for the Soviets. Out for Kazatonov. Kazatonov with a big shot, and he ripped it at just wide. I think Mason may have gotten a piece of that. Here we come again. Up, up, shooting it in. Back to get it is Fatisov. Fatisov unloading a pass for Gusarov. Gusarov at center ice now. Larionov to the line, drops it off. Larionov getting set. Here's the shot right on. That one taken by Davidov. Soviets keep it in as Davidov drove and stopped that. Now Makarov trying to get it on front. Davidov shot it just wide. Makarov deflected it off a back checker of the Nordics and wound up getting it right on the stick. Now, again, coming back to check is Larionov at center ice pin, shooting it right back in again. Konstantinov at center ice, Larionov. Larionov getting it over the line now and moving after it is Makarov. Makarov. Peter Stasny picking up that loose puck. Finn. Stasny again. And we have a whistle and I believe a penalty has been called in the center ice zone. Four to two. Central Army leads the Nordics. This is the NHL Soviet Super Series on CTV. Toyota reveals the key to space, luxury, and performance. The 1989 Toyota Camry. Quality you can trust with space and luxury to unwind while optional V6 power winds you home. Who could ask for anything more? Milnikoff and Mason, the goaltenders here at the Colisee in Quebec City. And here's the Goal by Humalev, unassisted. Let's look at him going in. Look at that, just picking that hole around Mason. Ron, or Bob Mason had gone out, and he was backing up, and he wasn't sure which way he was going, so he started to plant his feet and open up that five hole for Humalev, and he made no mistake. Now to Shane for checking, but the puck comes to Malahoff, one of the young defensemen for the Central Army. 
Moeller at center ice. He's checked on the play. Is moving up on it was Nemchinov. Now home left. And it's backhanded past Biakin. And it's center ice to Shane once again. Gets end to Shane. Gets it again. Under a lot of traffic problems. Goulet then ahead for Peter Stasny to Duchesne. Duchesne over the line now. One hands the puck. Goulet moving in after it. Looking for that man in front. Good play. Another big save made by Milnikov. He's made a couple of good ones. He's had some posts going too. He's got the post going, but he, you watch Milnikov. Uh, if we get a replay of this, he goes down. He's really concentrating on covering as much ice as he can with his pads. Watch. He's going to be going down. Here's the shot by Stasny. He's, uh, he's going to do the, the spread eagle. It's one of those uh, goaltenders you're going to have to have some, a little bit of time to, in order to fake the shot to get them down to go upstairs. And that's the one thing that a good team like the Soviets aren't going to give you is that time to fake that shot. Melnikov, a veteran, he's one of four players over 30 years of age on this team. The others are Fatisov, Makarov, and Starikov, who we have not seen in this game. We just had a look at Michel Goulet going to the dressing room limping. We'll wait to see if we can get a report on what's uh, what's wrong with Michelle. Must have been in the aftermath of that play as players went to the ice. Here come the Soviets once again as Kaminsky tried to get a shot in. Homotov's there in the corner. What a line this is. Now it's Bekov shooting it wide of the net. Jackson. Jackson intercepted. Here we go. Homotov set and Mason makes the save. Boy, the goaltenders are putting on a show. Anton Stasny to Podobny. He fights his way, trying to get past Kusarov, who played the man very well. Jackson moves in. Jackson knocked to the ice by Bekov, and Jackson appears to be hurt on the play, and they're calling for the trainer to come. Did he land on his shoulder? No, I think he got hit, uh, Ron, by the boards. As he went into the boards, he got trapped, and he took, looks like he took a hip right in the, on the uh, the hip, it looks like it may be a hip board. Here's the watch this now. Watch the turn. There's the hip. Oh. It just pinches him into the boards. And you can tell. I can tell you that hurts. Hip pointer. It looks like this might be a hip pointer, and that can be very painful. It can draw out in a little while. Things hip. that are difficult to to cure: hip pointers and groin injuries. Four to two, Soviets lead. This is the NHL Soviet Super Series on CTV. I guess uh, the only thing you can do sometimes is talk about it a little bit. Jeff Jackson's down in the ha hallway there. He's in a bit of pain. Here's Mason, uh, Brad. Goaltenders have really been good. Well, this is where goaltenders got to spread out. Bob Mason did a good job of doing that. He stayed right with that Soviet player as he came in. They tried to slip it through his legs. I think they've got two goals through his legs. Bob Mason knows that, and he, he closed him down in a hurry there. Took it away from him. Puck is in the corner now. Yarvi's there. Sakic, Sakic up along the boards, and puck is cleared to center ice. Four to two is the score. Soviets are leading. Kazatonov now getting it to Gusarov. Gusarov through center ice. This is Homotov over the line. Now this line can really motor. Homotov trying to get it in front. Good move made by Gusarov to cut into open ice. Now Homotov again trying to control it back out near the line, but uh, Gusarov is caught. This is a two on one. Yarvi with Sakic. Yarvi scores! a look at Yarvi breaking out a little overpassing by the Soviets in the Quebec end. Yarvi comes down to watch the defenseman. The defenseman's playing the pass, giving him the shot. Yarvi makes no mistake. It just drills him by Melnikov. Well, you can't, I don't think you can, can you criticize Kasatonov on that play? He seemed to bottle up the middle. Goaltender's got to play the man. Well, there's a fine line there because Yarvi's coming down. He's a left-hand shot coming down the right side. In one way, you want him to be just farther over the boards. 